Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today we are going over my top five overpowered ships. Now, how overpowered are these ships? Well, they are so overpowered that every single one of them has been removed from the game in some way, shape, or form. In fact, a couple of them are so removed that you cannot get them in any way currently, unless Wargaming brings them back from an auction. I find that very, very rare. The other ones do come up in Christmas containers and super containers and some special event containers throughout the year. But yes, we are talking about literally the most overpowered ships in the game. Again, to the point where they have to have been removed from the game. So let's go ahead and get on into it. If you find yourself enjoying this video, please make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and why don't you subscribe to the channel while you're down there. Helps out, of course, on the YouTube side of things. But let's go ahead and get started with number five, which is the tier five Italian battleship, the Julius Caesar. Sticking to that name because I don't want to slaughter its actual Italian pronunciation. Yes, to Julius Caesar. The, oh man, this ship is so good that the devs tried to bump her up to tier 6 back in the day and try and reintroduce her that way because she is, of course, a historical ship that, of course, many players would like to have in their ports. So Wargaming tried to balance her out by just bumping her up to tier 6 and tweaking one or two of her stats. And I think you probably could have got, gotten away with that. But of course, many a player complained that, hey, look, I paid for this version of the ship, not some random tier 6 version of the ship. So Wargaming backed off of that idea. And yeah, the Julius Caesar. Now, why is this at number 5? Because many of you probably think this is one of the most busted ships in the game. And while it's true that she is incredibly strong and incredibly powerful, I wouldn't say she's the most busted ship in the game because unlike a lot of the other ships on this list that have one or two attributes that are just incredibly good, the Julius Caesar is okay in most aspects. And that's what makes her overpowered because she is a tier 5 battleship. At tier 5, many, many a battleship has maybe one or two aspects that are okay to decent everything else about them is terrible they might have good guns but their turret traverse is just eternal right and they're slow and they're not very maneuverable it takes forever for the rudder to shift and their guns are inaccurate at all right the julius caesar is just okay all around her turret rotation time okay her dispersion by tier 5 standards it's I'd. It's actually the old German battleship dispersion, believe it or not. Her maneuverability, pretty decent. Her speed, pretty good. Her concealment, it's alright. When you do that at a tier where most battleships are lucky to have one decent stat, right? You get a bit of a monster of a ship. And a ship that is incredibly fun to play because... One of the th things about her that is quite good is her maneuverability. At tier 5, most of the battleships are slow, hulking things. The Julius Caesar feels more like, you know, what we would consider to be a, a battle cruiser in today's World of Warships than a battleship. Shows she's nice, she's maneuverable, her guns are pretty decent. Yeah, they have the German battleship dispersion, but they are pretty good hard-hitting guns when they do connect which is from my experience more often than not which again is a bit better than most other tier 5 battleships so you have just all these stats and attributes that are you know ranging from okay to pretty decent in a ship there's not really anything bad about the julius caesar with the exception of her armor unlike a lot of other tier 5 battleships where you can you know, pretty much sell broadside to the enemy battleship and yeah obviously you're gonna need more damage right but you probably aren't gonna get citadel you are gonna get citadel than the caesar because her citadel is well exposed and vulnerable to that fire right but everything else about the ship is really good and if you are lucky enough to pick the ship up which i think the ship is only possible to get in super containers right now i believe last year or the year before last was the last time she was going to appear in the santa containers and now you gotta get super lucky in a super container to get her and that brings us down to number four which is the tier five japanese destroyer the kamikaze the kamikaze is man it has to be the best still clubbing ship in the game this thing is just downright it, a bully if you build into torpedoes so 
The Kamikaze, if you're unaware of the ship, it is a ship that can quite literally walk up to you from about 5.4, 5.5 kilometers away, dump torpedoes into your side, and just leave, and you'll never know it was there until the torpedoes are impacting your hull. At tier 5, keep keep this in mind, right? Because 5.4 kilometers, that sounds pretty good at you know tier 10. But this is at tier 5, right? And a lot of other destroyers, especially when you're at like tier 4 and below, their concealment's pretty good, but this is like best in class concealment at this tier, right? And, and because of that too, you can also spot other destroyers for the friendly team, which is pretty funny, right? And torpedo them too, quite easily because of that. But anyway, you build into the torpedoes, you can sneak up to someone 5.5, 5.4, 5.5 kilometers away and dump a rack of torpedoes into their side. But oh, what if I miss Seaward? Well, that's fine because in a mere 42 seconds, before adrenaline rush kicks in, 42 seconds, if you build into the torps, you'll have another complete set ready to go. Now, this of course means that since you're at tier 5, and there's usually not a whole lot of CVs around, you can just run around the map and just bully ships. Everything from destroyers to cruisers to battleships with a kamikaze, and it's just so, so incredibly easy to do. It's so easy to do that I'm a pretty decent torpedo boat player in the kamikaze, and if my battleship, you know, knuckle dragger, self can do well in the kamikaze trust me if you have any any type of experience with the torpedo deities you will be able to just absolutely mop the field with the kamikaze you, you put a 21 point to one point commander on this thing build into the torps and you're just going to be bullying players at tier 5 which even better for the kamikaze nowadays is that we have bots that can you know show up and fill in the empty slots at tier 5 and below so in those cases um yeah you can easily farm damage in the kamikaze like never before which is of course great for your in-game wallet right now of course when i sat down to record this video i got you know all real player matches and in uh, my kamikaze because naturally when I want to play against bots and randoms doesn't happen but it happened randomly throughout the week because of course that's how it works right but anyway great ship for torpedo uh, for torpedo boat captains great ship to bully other ships in and yeah if you pick one up you're really lucky and I would highly recommend using it all right and that brings us on down now to number the third which is the tier 8 Soviet battleship the Lenin the linen is man. When time comes around for tier eight rate, uh, tier eight ranked, tier eight clan battles, linen is absolutely friggin' everywhere. Sixteen inch Soviet bias AP shells in a Nelson configuration. You know Nelson and Lin and uh, a Vladivostok went into the bar, and nine months later, well, we have a linen. And good God. This takes this whole Soviet bow-taking battleship thing to the next level with the Lenin. Because in most of those cases, if you're in a Vladivostok or a Kremlin or a Savesky Soyuz, right, when you're bow-tanking, you only have your front six guns to use. So that third turret gets a little lonely and the crew gets bored because they're not doing anything for a good portion of the match. But with the Lenin, because you have the same turret set up as you do with the Nelson, you're able to get that third turret into the action a whole hell of a lot more. Which means when you're bow tanking or angling steeply, because the turret angles are pretty good on the linen, uh, you have your full firepower at your disposal, which means you can clap other tier 8 battleships for the entirety of their HP with a single salvo, which is pretty ridiculous. And you do it fairly consistently too in the linen if you have good aim. And the downside, of course, is that, you know. It is, you know, similar to the Nelson. You have a very high citadel. If you're caught broadside, it's going to hurt. And that's kind of a weakness of the Soviet battleships in general. But it does hurt a lot more in the Lenin because you are standing up out of the water quite a ways. But if you stay either angled in from the bow or angled in from the stern, you can tank easily for days with the Lenin. And, of course, if you have Kuznetsov as well and you get his will to victory talent, I mean... Yeah, you're just an absolute pain to deal with. And again, you have those very excellent Soviet bias guns on top of that. And there's been, again, so many instances in the Lenin, in my Lenin at least, where I've chunked someone for like half of their HP, if not the entirety of their HP, when they slip up and show me broadside. The 16-inch Soviet bias shells do not mess around at all. The other weakness of the Lenin is that her AA isn't really 
great. And Soviet ships, from tier 8 on up, they have pretty decent AA. Kremlin actually has really good AA. It's just that when you sneeze on it, it all is just destroyed. So that's the other weakness to the Linden. Oh, and her stern has a lot of 90 degree angles because you have a weird, um, a weird float plane hanger there that again has a lot of 90 degree angles and flat sides for the other ships to shoot at but again when you're bowing tanking doing what soviet battleships do Lenin can absolutely sit there for an eternity and still use all nine of her guns all right now that takes us on down now to number two which is the tier eight american aircraft carrier the enterprise backed by popular demand on this list now Enterprise is a carrier that has gone from being, you know, absolutely just outright godly overpowered to just being on the edge of being overpowered and just really freaking good. Why? Well, as with any carrier, the carrier rework did a number on the Enterprise. A lot of the carriers that were released around the end of RTSCV's beginning of the rework era, if you will, they didn't really age tremendously well, like the Graf Zeppelin. Graf Zeppelin, upon her initial testing release, was absolutely godlike, right? And then they did some change at the last second. She wasn't as good as beforehand. They pulled her, and then they reintroduced her with the Commander... Well, I'm sorry, not the Commander rework, with the CV rework. Enterprise was already out, and she was an amazing CV in the RTS age. And then, when she was re-released with the... CV rework era, she was also really freaking good, and then they pulled her, right? So, the Enterprise suffered the most from the changes to the rocket planes, and then the bomb dispersion changes, and then the bomb damage nerfs, and uh, again, another series of nerfs just over the years that we're giving us done to try and rein in CVs. But despite all these changes, which has absolutely murdered a lot of CVs, the Enterprise is still really freaking good, which is a testament to how busted she was upon her initial release, right? Her HE rockets back in the day before they added in the firing delay, the reticle is so small for them. And you have those wonderful, wonderful American HE rockets with the high pin and the good fire rates, right? You could just fly around blapping destroyers for most of their HP like it was absolutely nothing. Even I could do that back in the day. And I'm not that great of a CV player, right? And then the AP bombers. Man, you would just fly over a, a cruiser, drop the bombs, and just watch them disappear in, in one run. That's seriously how good she was. And then the torpedoes were just good a source of good, consistent uh, consistent damage throughout the match. And you'd easily be seeing just a pile of damage and dead ships by the end of the match. So today, though, her strong suit is still, of course, her torpedo bombers. And her AP bombers, when they do work, are still quite good. And the Tiny Tim rockets that she gets, sorry, the, the, uh, the HE rockets that she gets... They are still good, you just have that firing delay, and she still has that really tight reticle, so if you can kind of, you know, get used to that, you can still murder DDs. but what I do is I just bully uh, cruisers and battleships with the Enterprise, and she's very, very, very good at it, because you hit them with the HE rockets, get a couple fires going on top of probably like 15k alpha damage just from the uh, rockets alone they damage count that you follow that up with the torpedo planes you get a couple instances instances of flooding on there and then you hit them with the ap bombers of course when it comes to like you know battleships she typically doesn't get as many citadels as you do with cruisers uh, with the ap bombers but the way they mess with the ap bombs the way that they fall it's kind of uh, dealing with cruisers now but it can of course still happen and the, the strongest thing about the enterprise is that three i'm sorry two of her three squadrons have a sub 60 second plane regeneration rate which means that you are creating more planes somehow <laughs> in your hangar bay under in under a minute so when you lose planes it really doesn't hurt that much and that means you can you know if you can juggle the squadrons decently well you really won't run out of planes in the enterprise there's be launching you know incomplete squadrons which is of course great for you right and again even i can do that when i get double up tier to tier 10 games in my enterprise right and again if i can do it a proper cv player can really 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 make this thing something special so because of all of that still she's an incredibly powerful cv and again 
earning the number two slot on this list. That brings us on our way down now to number one, was in my opinion the most busted ship in the game, or if not, definitely in a close, a very, very close race for that slot, and that is the tier four Soviet battleship, the Nikolai the First. So the Nikolai the First is my god. It's a tier four battleship with 12 305 millimeter guns that can actually hit what it's aiming at and hit it quite hard because again soviet bias shells she was the first ever soviet battleship in this game and i believe with the exception of the kitakami the one of the first ships to be outright removed from the game like pulled and not added in you know not kept in the game and like you know you can still keep the ship if you have it right the kitakami was removed and like you, you could not keep it after she was removed they replaced it with the otago the um nikolai was just removed and if you had it you could keep it like they do today right i believe she was the first ship to have that happen to her and if you are lucky enough to get one of these which i think it's got the similar treatment to the julius caesar where you cannot get it in santa containers anymore only in super containers you have one of the best sill clubbers in the game, probably again second or tied with Kant with the Kamikaze. Because these guns, they hit hard, they're in a very convenient setup as you'll see in the background footage. Three of your four turrets are facing forward, right? So you can point the bow of your ship at the at the enemy ship, angle slightly to the left or to the, or to the right, and get three of your four turrets on target. Turret number four has got to take the long way around, but with how accurate the nine guns that you're firing at the target are, you don't really need to wait for turret number four to get there, especially again at tier four, and you just chew your way through the enemy team. On top of all that, too, she's still pretty tanky for a you know tier four battleship. And again, the fact that you can approach most of your targets from a bow in nature, uh, that's of course going to increase your survivability, right? And she doesn't have the Soviet quick cooldown damage con. I, you might see that as a negative, or some might see that as a positive because you have an unlimited amount of damage cons, but. You don't have to deal with that either way, right? I think it's kind of a net positive at tier 5. I'm sorry, at tier 4. Because of just the nature of how tier 4 is played. And again, like we talked about the Kamikaze. And Nikolai can see a whole lot of bots that love selling broadside. And you have 12 305mm guns with Soviet bias capabilities. And you can definitely just blap them out of existence. Even if through sheer overpins because of how many shells you have. I believe she has the heaviest broadside out of all the tier 4 ships. So, yeah. If you have Kusazov, like we talked about with the linen, put them on Nikolai. My god, you have, what, like industrial sill clubbing at this point with the Nikolai the first. So, I believe... You know, tier for tier, Nikolai is the most overpowered ship in the game. Wargaming seems to, to have realized that, because I think she was released in, like, 5.03, and she was removed in, I think, 5.3 or 5.31 for, I believe the reason they gave was, like, excessively high win rates. So, yeah, the OG OP ship herself, the Nikolai I, takes first spot on this list so guys let me know in the comments down below which ships we have, would you have included on this list which ships would you have removed from this list let me know all that jazz down below hope you guys have a wonderful monday and wonderful rest of your week hope to catch you guys in the next one